In the heart of Hollywood, the landscape of the entertainment industry wasn't always welcoming. The historical portrayal of black individuals was often marred by stereotypes and discrimination, reflecting a turbulent reality. But amidst the adversity, early black filmmakers sought to bring authentic stories to life. Their efforts, however, struggled to find wide distribution, overshadowed by the dominance of Hollywood's portrayal. Yet tiny sparks of change began to emerge. I present the Academy Award for the best performance of an actress in supporting role during 1939 to Hattie McDaniel. Hattie McDaniel's triumphant win as best supporting actress in the 1940 film Gone with the Wind marked a turning point, even though her achievement was tainted by segregation. The years passed and 1964 brought a breakthrough a black leading man winning Best Actor, Sidney Portier in the film Lilies of the Field. Hollywood was beginning to take notice. Amidst the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, and a slumping box office, opportunities opened up for blacks in Hollywood television. This put Diane Carroll in the 1968 show Julia. Paramount produced The Learning Tree in 1969, but Melvin Van Peebles' Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song in 1971 set Hollywood on fire. Against this backdrop, Motown moved to LA in 1972 and established a recording studio on 7317 Romaine. As the entertainment landscape shifted, a series of events unfolded, creating a perfect storm that would center on Poinsettia Park. Once a haven for Hollywood icons like Charlton Heston and Elliot Gould, Poinsettia Park transformed into a mecca for black Hollywood. The attraction to Poinsettia Park was that it was outside of the traditional black community of Los Angeles. Poinsettia Park was a place where you could learn about how to roll in Hollywood, how to roll in LA. We had some young working actors that needed to blow off steam or needed to get out of the Hollywood thing and work out. This was the place to do it. So from a cultural perspective, that the fact that we were all able to gather, th this was a community. This was a community of artists. Poinsettia became the center where stars of the big screen, small screen, musicians and athletes united, finding solace and connection. Among LA's 181 parks, Poinsettia stood out as a cultural hub within the park system. But how did people find out about the park? You know, usually it's always something bad that brings you to something good. And that's what happened to me. I had uh, walked off of a job where I thought I was being harassed and mistreated in the middle of the day. I, said, I was so mad that I started to wait on the bus and I realized I couldn't stand still. So I just started walking. It started to get dark and I'm up there on Santa Monica Boulevard and I see this array of the lights coming up out of the sky. You know, I could see there was something over there, but I didn't know what it was. I said, oh, maybe it's a baseball field or something like that. And when I got down there, I saw all these great tennis courts and I saw people playing on them and I saw black people playing on them. I didn't know many people in LA, but I knew Lawrence and he took me around. And the next thing you know, one of the places he took me to was Poinsettia Park. Lawrence Hill Jacobs said, hey man, this is where all the the actors and uh, show business people were hanging out. I had my three-year-old son at the time when I came to L.A. This is him today, what he looks like today. We ride straight down Poinsettia, cross Mill Road, Santa Monica, and my son seen the park. He said, park that, park that. Right? And he got to jumping up and down in the car. So I pulled over and he hit the lock and jumped out the car and ran to the tennis court right in front of it and stuck his hands in the fence. And he said, ooh, daddy, I got ready to bust his butt for jumping out the car. I ran up behind him, but it was three beautiful black queens that was playing tennis on that first court, man. And that happened to have been Jane Kennedy, Frida Payne, 
and Deborah Lord. I turn around and who I see walking down the walkway going into the park was Rick James. Then I see Sidney Porte. I said, damn, where the hell am I at? I remember uh, Glenn Turner and I played against Sidney Portier. Art and I thought that we were going to become tennis aficionados. And we happened to run into Sidney Poitier, who was at the time playing tennis. And we, of course, you know, were enthused and, you know, great, happy to see him and everything. Hey, Sidney, hey, 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 Mr. P, we are okay to call him Mr. P. You know, Mr. P, Mr. P, you know. And we were calling Sidney Poitier the old man. And he better go get somebody to help him off the court afterwards. Mr. P says, no, I will not play you. And we say, oh, come on, man, you know, we, we, we got a game for you. We got a game for you. He says, I will not play either one of you. And we were talking trash and talking trash. I will play both of you at the same time. And if I win, you've got to put in the trades that Sidney Poitier whipped your asses. <laughs> okay, man, yeah, all right, okay. That's a bet, that's a bet. Well, we took him on together and he whipped our asses. He beat us so bad. It was, it was not funny. And talk smack all the way. And you got to imagine Sidney talking smack with his, his very distinguished self. But he was he was cutting us down like a Harlem boy. I mean, he, he was he was talking more trash to kind of got liver pills. And he beat us and we had to take out an ad in the trades that Sidney beat us. Right there in Poinsettia Park. Well-known park tournaments like the Hank Ross-produced Poinsettia Classic Basketball Tournament saw retired pros participating in the park events. Hank Ross, he started a lot of the camaraderie. He put together the first Poinsettia Classic, and that grew from six or seven teams to 20 teams. The Jesse Jackson Fundraiser Tennis Tournament was also a standout at the park, put together by Al Malik Farrakhan. Myself, Jim Brown, Fred Williamson. We had good competition. We had real good tennis players, man. It was definitely home because every every day, I mean, it was every day, man, at the same time, they either play tennis or you play basketball. It was one football game at Point Seven Park, just one. Tony hit me, it was touch football, but they turned it into tackle. From there, I was like, well, I'm done with basketball. I'm done with football. I'm going to play tennis. I looked over and saw guys like Jim Brown, Sidney. I'm like, is that Sidney Portier? Is that Jim Brown? They playing tennis? I'm like, okay, I'm playing tennis. I heard so many wonderful stories about the Poinsettia era. It was exciting to hear these stories over the years from a man that is like a father figure to me because I've worked with him for and known him over 30 years, the great Jim Brown. It seemed like you had to know somebody to walk up though. Yeah. It seemed like a person just couldn't yeah. walk up. He had to, had to know Roz or had to know somebody, but once you got in that little click, Cool Weekday early mornings and afternoons, retired actors and musicians ruled the court. By the late afternoon, Hollywood stars began taking over not just on the tennis and basketball courts, but also on the domino table, keeping the park alive through the night. And you could go there on a given weekend especially. You could see Robin Harris standing under a tree, doing the same thing his characters did in Do the Right Thing. You know, him and the three guys are sitting there in the corner talking about giving you a critique of the community. Robin Harris is standing there at Point Center Park doing that. And Les McCann will recount his experiences in life by telling stories. Point Center was the place to go. I'd be on the trip, go to Europe, the car come pick me up, take me home. I tell the guy, take my stuff on, drop me off at the park. It was a place where you could woosah. It was a place where you could breathe. It was a safe haven 
And once you began to meet the people, they became family. They protected you. They cared for you. We partied. Psychologically, it was a refuge because we all know uh, the racism in the business, whether it's music, film, etc. But there you could really be among yourselves, your own tribe, and enjoy each other and, and have peace of mind. It was the place to be for upcoming entertainers, actors, and actresses. The nightlife scene emerged through Poinsettia, with events being promoted by Rick Nelson and Leonard Herring. The Melting Pot became one of the go-to places for nightlife, where Lakers fans watched the 1980s championships, along with Michael Jackson's first moonwalk. But as with all eras, change was inevitable. Black Hollywood started losing its steam while cocaine and societal challenges began taking hold of the country and the park. This was a place where people who had made it could go, people who were trying to make it could go. And what happened was people fell by the wayside. People either gave up that dream, you know, the midnight train to Georgia that they talk about. They said LA was too tough for the man. Well, for some it was. We've been operating under post-traumatic slave syndrome. I saw that happen out here on these tennis courts, and I resented it so much, Bill Elliott would come out in his Rolls Royce Cornish, and when he'd leave, the brothers would be talking about, man, that N-I-G-G, I'd be glad when he lose that Rolls Royce. Why are you envious of that man? Why, are you just, why don't you be happy for him? I uh, was touring a lot. When I toured uh, that much, I mean, I, I, it, it sort of reduced reduce my chances of going over the points that he had played. By the time I got into a position to be halfway decent, they stopped doing it. They stopped. <laughs> what? You know, I'm around going, okay, let's go and come out here. And where is everybody? Where the, you know, it had moved on. It had moved on. Those still working found other places of refuge, moving to other areas like the valley. Those who weren't working left town for safer, familiar grounds or were swallowed up by their addiction, and some became residents of the park itself. By the late 1990s, the era of Black Hollywood at Poinsettia Park ended. Occasional visitors and those living there were evidence of its past glory days. Yet the love and friendships formed in those hallowed grounds never died. A Poinsettia Facebook page was established and first Monday breakfasts in Los Angeles kept the spirit alive. The Poinsettia 45th year reunion on January 4th, 2020 marked a special moment. We had a reunion in January of 2020 and that was something to see everybody, you know, alive and well, right before the pandemic. Point City of Park means to me that we had an opportunity to come together. Point City of Park, it's a, an alumni. It was a place of refuge. It was very tribal. It was truly a haven. It was, it was a safe haven. And it's almost like a story of sort, when you think of the little engine that could. Point City is a little pump. But when you get inside of it, it's a fantasy. You couldn't believe what took place inside the park. You know the relationships and how it developed basketball, the tennis. Point Center Park was a special place. We knew some things that a lot of people never experienced because we had a chance to be in one of the melting pots in Hollywood to see Hollywood greatness, Hollywood royalty come and go. I learned a lot about what it was to come to Hollywood and be a brother. Best thing that happened to me at a poinsettia was I met my wife and she gave me two beautiful daughters. That's what poinsettia did for me. I know that there are a lot of happy memories at Poinsettia Park and John would be thrilled to be remembered as one of the alumni. Poinsettia Park is one of the three most primary foundational realities of my artistic life. We still ride by. You know, we still talk about it, that's why we're here. Poinsettia Park is the point of departure for the talent that was here in Los Angeles. They came here, they met, they exchanged information, and then went back out into the field to hook it up. Today, a new generation plays basketball in the mornings, 
Old timers come through occasionally to hit some tennis balls or just sit and reflect as they lay eyes on the homeless encampments across the street, reminiscing about the glory days. Poinsettia Park symbolizes unity, resilience, and the power of a community united by shared dreams. Though the era of Black Hollywood has passed, its spirit lives on in the hearts of those who found a haven within. Yeah, boy!